Today is Wednesday, April the 5th, 2017. And today we got to talk about this uh, internet privacy protection that has been repealed, that has not been able to get put on the books. And we got to talk about a lot of the hysteria behind it, a lot of misinformation behind it, and many other things. But before we get into that, I just want to give you a brief overview of actually what people have been saying about it. Many of the lobbyists or some of the mainstream media, not all of the mainstream media, I will give some of the mainstream media credit on this one, including NBC News. And I place a link to their story in the box below, but they called it pretty honest. But some of the mainstream media is not calling it honest. And a lot of them have been misinformed by lobbyists who were paid on the behalf of these big behemoth companies that operate on ISPs, such as your Netflix, your Facebooks, your YouTube, Google, etc. They have their own interests and they pay lobbyists to do it. But that's a whole different story. And I digress for now. I just want to explain what's going on. Now, there's a lot of hysteria behind these Internet privacy rules being repealed by the Republicans. So people are saying, well, they're trying to sell your user data to the highest bidder. If you've been on a porno website, if you've been on one of these cheating websites, if you have bought an escort or something like that, they'll make it public and then sell it to anybody that wants it. But that's not what's happening. First of all, this is about advertising. It's not about just some nefarious plot to get all your personal information. I saw this uh, GoFundMe where some people are trying to buy the browser history of people in Congress. That will never happen. This GoFundMe is pretty fraudulent. Actually, it should be taken down because the ISPs, the Internet service providers, they are bound to customer privacy rules that are set by the FTC. And they also have their own privacy rules in-house at the actual ISPs, your Comcast, Cox Communications, etc., the place you buy your internet from cannot sell your information like that the way that people are talking about it, right? And if they could, if they wanted to, they would have already have done it because what this repealing did was just to prevent a regulation from coming onto the books. It did not remove a regulation. So that's the whole thing I was kind of confused about. That's why I waited for a little while until I got some more information about the story before I did it because I'm thinking... Yo, did they repeal it? Like as far as it being the actual rule that was already on the books or did they stop something from coming onto the books that was not there yet? And what I found out is that it's the latter. But the way some of the media has framed it will make you think the former. But that's just not what's going on. All that they did by repealing this is to maintain the status quo. And I knew something was going on when I was watching TV and I'm seeing a lot of these uh, liberals talking about it. Your Tim Kaines and whatnot saying, oh, they just hold your user data to the highest bidder on the, on the right you know, evil Republicans. I'm like, OK, something ain't right there. And people were hitting me up about it. I just wanted to wait a little while until I got some more information. And now I have it, including an article written by Ajit Pai, who was the current chair of the FCC. That's the Federal Communications Commission. The FCC, their role is just to regulate satellite, cable, etc. on the more technical side, not on the actual side of dealing with the individual websites and stuff like that that exist on the isp that's not what their job is but this regulation would have made that happen it would have transferred control of the internet as far as it relates to customer privacy from the ftc which specializes in consumer privacy consumer protection it would have transferred it from them to the fcc right and that's just not what it should be because that's not what their role is right now the way it is right now works perfectly fine. There does need to be some ramping up as far as privacy is concerned because of, you know, malicious attacks and stuff like that. But you don't need so many government regulations and you definitely don't need a commission that is focused more on a technical side to handle the minutia of dealing with actual websites and stuff like that. That's not how that should work. But see, the thing about it is this whole thing has been lobbied by a lot of these big websites you're talking about your facebook your google your um, netflix hulu amazon etc ebay because they don't want competition from the isps if the isps ever wanted to do it because the rule that would have came onto the books that would say the isps cannot sell your data without telling you first that does not apply to these big companies that sell your data every day Every day, if you use Facebook, uh, Google, Amazon, any website like that, and if on your browser you have no tracker block, what they can do is they can pretty much track you, log your IP, 
and know what you're looking at, know how much you look at it, and give you some type of crazy, you know, algorithmic formula that is intentionally designed to put you into a place or to make you buy a certain thing. And the simplest way to explain it is if you go to a website like Zappos, you're looking at a pair of shoes, you just happen to be looking at it. And then you go back to Facebook. If you were logged into Facebook at the time, when you looked at the website, it communicates with each other. The browser, the 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 trackers communicate. So when you go back to Facebook, you see an ad of what you were just looking at, of the exact same thing you were looking at, of the exact same products to remind you, hey, go buy that. You were looking at it, go buy it right now. That is what this whole thing is about. It's not about some nefarious plot to sell your user data. It's like I saw that GoFundMe trying to buy people, uh, members of Congress, user data and make it public. That would never happen because the FTC has rules that don't allow that to happen. It's called consumer privacy. You have those protections under the FTC and it's in your contract. If you see your bill or something like that, it should say something about privacy in it. So they can't do that. And the ISP is not even really built to handle your data and to sell it and package it in the way that you do with buying ads the way that these big companies are. See, I've bought ads before on Facebook. I know what it is. I know how to go in there. You can target it to people's interests, where they live, how many kids they have. Like they have all kinds of information on you. And that's how advertisers are able to buy ads because Facebook sells them your data. That's how that works. But the ISPs are not built like that. The big behemoth companies will say that, well, this rule would have put more competition on the books. But that's not true because the ISPs have low market share because there's a lot of them that compete that are very big. Prime example, you got Verizon Wireless for their broadband wireless service. They only own about 35 percent of the market. But Google owns about 90 percent of the Internet share market and almost 100 percent of the mobile Internet share market. So if you're talking about no competition, you're talking about these big behemoths, you got to look at these companies that operate on ISPs, not ISPs themselves. And also, this whole thing really is about net neutrality, which came about like two years ago under Barack Obama and Tom Wheeler. And I'll give you a brief story here. Tom Wheeler was a former chair of the FCC and the current chair is now Ajit Pai. Like, again, he wrote a great article about this, and I linked to that in the box below, but I digress. Tom Wheeler, his original proposal to fix a lot of these problems with Netflix and stuff like that, they use like 35 percent of all bandwidth in the United States was to say, OK, certain companies, you'd be able to pay for fast lanes. So rather than just having any kind of issues with your slowdown or whatever, whatever, you just pay for a faster lane of service. Therefore you'd be able to get better treatment with your company. It'd be, it'd be better able to run. But when he did that, you had 100 companies, uh, Facebook, YouTube, Google, Amazon, Hulu, etc., that wrote him a letter and said, no, no, no. What we want is net neutrality. to where you treat us the same as everybody else. And you don't throttle, you don't slow down or whatever. And we don't have to pay any kind of more money. And then they wanted to make it be like a utility. Barack Obama then tried to side with the people that wrote him the letter. He tried to invoke Title II of the 34 Communications Act that said that this is going to be utility now, just like water or whatever. You can't charge more for water, depending upon how much is used. You got to charge kind of a flat rate. So that's the same kind of thing going on here, but that's not how it's supposed to work. And that was going to come into fruition coming up here at least the first phase of it but then the new administration republicans canceled that out right so even the guy that was under obama tom wheeler didn't even want to do what obama did but when he got that pressure from those companies i don't know maybe some of them paid him some money for his election maybe they did maybe they didn't but i don't know but when those letters got sent out that's when obama changed his tune that's when tom wheeler changed his tune that's when they tried to put those title two from 34 into effect but we have successfully been able to stop it and you can see articles that are nonpartisan all over the internet about this from people that actually know about the internet you'll see stuff that is in favor of what the republicans fought against from a lot of the lobbyists that want to work for netflix and whatever the bottom line is this was just a big fight between big billion dollar brands and the isps that is it you personally, as a consumer, you're protected by the FTC right now. So your privacy, as it relates to the ISPs, 
a place where you actually go to pay for your internet, that privacy is regulated already. You don't have to worry about that. If anything, you got to worry about the sites you love to go to all the time. Your Amazons, your Facebooks, Netflix, they know so much about you and they sell it every day. They know where you live, how much money you make, how many kids you got, how you look, how your eyes look. They do all that. And if you got a, a iPhone, they got your thumbprint and everything. So that's what you need to be worried about and not the ISPs. This was just a fear mongering campaign by the left to try and get more power of the government into the Internet. And that's just the wrong way to go. You don't want to have a department of the Internet when you're talking about the government, because we all know <laughs> what the government does when they start to control things. They don't control it well. They don't do what they're supposed to be doing. The power of the free market is what has made internet successful when you're talking about trying to impose more regulation on it that's not going to do anything but just decrease innovation it's going to decrease a lot of different things and at the end of the day you're going to start to see more censorship so a lot of my people that are on youtube a lot of content creators you should be against it because once you have more government intervention into the internet then how does that work when it comes to the content that's produced on the internet? So you just don't want that. Just leave the internet the way it is. Don't have any kind of government regulation. The privacy of the internet does need to be tightened up because technology has been advancing and it's much more difficult to keep things secure. But that is not the role of the FCC. And it definitely shouldn't be done at the behest of companies like Facebook that sell your data all day, every day as a part of their whole business model. That does not make any sense. So that's pretty much all it is to it. So what do you think? Do you think this whole thing was a fear mongering campaign from lobbyists that want to work for these big behemoth companies that want to use a lot of bandwidth and they don't want to pay the appropriate amount of money. So they want to pass it on to you, the consumer through the ISPs by controlling the ISPs through the government and their lobbyists. Or do you think I'm wearing a tinfoil hat? It's not like that. It's all about making the internet a utility, just like everything else. It should be available to everybody. The government should be able to regulate it. Now, if that's the case, how do you feel about the government just stepping in and saying, you know what? This website, I don't like. It, it, it's, it's hate speech. It's, you see what I'm saying? Like when you have government regulation, all that does is just make it more difficult for you to use the internet and enjoy it. The regulation will only help these big companies that want to be able to sell your data more than the ISP could legally even do. I know me personally, I don't like my data to be sold and I definitely don't like for me to try and support something that will have more of it sold by fewer and fewer people just because lobbyists told me to do so. But whatever your comments are, let me know in the comments below. And that's all I gotta say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.